Okay, so let's start with some general comments about importing data. First of all, again, I assume you've set up your work environment um, just as here in this example um, figure. If you don't know how to do it, you can have a look at the, at the uh, separate session uh, on project management. As said, the raw data should be saved in the subdirectory data raw uh, to keep it separate from, from basically everything else. Of course, if you have few data sets, you could basically ignore the sub, uh, subdirectory raw and tidy and basically just save every data in, um, in, the, in the folder data, be it tidy or raw. However, I personally would recommend you to do these kind of subdirectories anyway, because then you say, okay, whatever is in the subdirectory data raw is never touched upon. And it's terribly important. However, everything that's in this um, subdirectory data, data tidy is in principle is dispensable because with the scripts that I later save in the subfolder R, um, I can always create everything in data tidy from the data in data slash raw. No? Um, this is why I would suggest to have a separate subdirectory for the tidied up data. Um, just to keep it separate and to make it as easy as possible for you. So how to tidy up the data? We have a separate session on data preparation here, as I said, only about how to import um, raw data into R. And how to do that, of course, depends on the kind of data that you actually want to import, or more precisely, the file format. Yeah? Um, because now that we set up the project uh, environment, of course, we can uh, import the data. We will assume it's in data raw, uh, and we need to use an R function to do so. But which R function to do so depends on the file type of the data you actually want to import. I already mentioned CSV files. Uh, CSV files are probably the most common data files because they are the easiest to transfer because they are basically very simple um, text files. Um, these are files where we have table-like data and the columns are separated by a comma. There's a related notion, TSV files, where the columns are separated not by a comma, but by a tab. Much less common, but in principle, um, the, the importing works very, very similar. If you have CSV or TSV files, I usually recommend you to use the function fread from the package data table. There are many alternatives. Um, there are also alternatives from the tidyverse from which we use most of our functions. Um, but I personally recommend this, uh, this function every because it's super fast. Um, and then you only need to learn about one importing function for CSV files and not one for like smaller data sets, one for bigger data sets. And I, I actually find it quite straightforward to handle. Um, so in case like having the data table package installed is not too much a burden of you, I recommend you to stick to it. At the same time, if you know how this function works, you basically know how all the other importing functions for CSV files work as well. So, Another very common data format are the RDS or R data files. In principle, this data um, format is much better than CSV in the sense it's faster to import, it's faster to write, it's better compression um, uh, properties, etc., etc. Big drawback, drawback though, it can only be accessed from R. So if you work together with people for which for some re uh, who for some reasons use SPSS or Stata, they can't open the, the R data or RDS files. Uh, so in this case, you may go back to something like CSV or TSV. But in principle, if you are working on a project on your own, you might use RDS or R data, and actually many official databases also provide their data in these file formats. So it's not not bad to know uh, to know about them. Importing data from these data files is super easy, super convenient using the functions read RDS load. Um, we are not talking about this because this would be just <laughs> too much a waste of your time. It's just super simple. You just use the function, the path to the file, and that's it. Um, so we won't focus on that here. As I said, you might collaborate with people who use more conventional statistic um, platforms like SPSS or Stata. They all have their specific file formats. Um, and the good thing is R has some functions to read and write this data as well. Uh, in particular, there's this, uh, this package called Haven, 
Uh, it provides you with functions such as read DTA for Stata files, read SIS for SIS files, read SPSS for SPSS files, etc., etc. They also have the correspondence uh, functions uh, write DTA, write SIS, etc., etc. Um, so whenever you work uh, closely with people who are using these kind of software packages, um, it's a good idea to have a look at, the, at that Haven package. Here, however, we focus on the very left side um, of, um, of this, on the CSV and TSV files, because on the one hand, it's the most common one. On the other hand, it's also the most tricky one. So once you learn how to manage these files um, for the import process, you basically um, are in a very, very good position also to, to use the other functions and to, to import a wide variety of, of data. Yeah? Um, especially against the backdrop that the basic procedure is the same in all cases. Yeah? So our focus here on CSV um, will not be a burden, but more of a facilitator for, for your future work. So here's a description of the general way of using um, the average function for a very general case. Um, and then we move directly into um, particular application cases. So uh, first of all, good practice. Um, you first need to think about where the data set that you wish to, to read into R is saved within your whole project environment. Uh, and to figure out the relative path to this data set. So in our case, assume we have um, our project called my project, and we want to read in the data set um, uh, VB data, uh, w, WB data, uh, dot CSV, uh, which contains some data from the World Bank. Uh, so here, the, the path is going to data, going to raw, and then type in the name of the, of the data set. We should always enclose this relative path into the function here from the here package, um, such that our code can be transferred from one computer to the other and works everywhere. More details as said in this session on project match. So we save this. So here returns a character vector. We save this um, character vector under some uh, meaningful name, such as data path. And then we call the function that we need to import this data on this, on this path. So in our case, we are dealing with a CSV file. So we need to use the function fread from the data table package. And the easiest way of using this function fread is basically to just call it um, and use the argument file and set it to the data path that we have defined before. In this case, R will import the data using all the default options provided by Afrit. Yeah. Um, as I said, in general, I recommend using Afrit all the time, even if you could also use a so-called simpler function from the base R package or from, from Tidyverse. But Afrit is very fast. And if you learn how to use this function, you can use it for basically all CSV files. So I will use it here all the time. Of course, if you, if you get um, used to it or you know all this stuff, you can also use a simpler function if you want to. Um, so there are many alternatives available also from, from the tidyverse. Now, if you just call this function like this, that uses the default options to import the file for all the other arguments of fread. That works fine whenever your data file is more or less clean. Yeah? So in many, many instances, um, the algorithms that are built into f also do a pretty good job in inferring the right argument, speci uh, speci um, yeah, argument specification. So it works very frequently. And um, you do not need to set the other arguments explicitly. However, in some instances, you are forced to set these other arguments explicitly because your data set is so weird that you need to provide additional information um, to R such that it works out. And sometimes it's also um, for the sake of transparency so that you immediately spot how the original raw data looks like. Um, then you might also decide to set the optional arguments explicitly. However, right now we focus on a very, very simple case. Uh, where the underlying raw data is in a state uh, that is already more or less acceptable, and we want to import it using um, the fread function. To this end, here's the first exercise. 
Um, you can download this zip file called um, afreadexamples.zip from the from the course homepage. Um, you can take the um, tzip you extract it into the subfolder data raw. There are three data sets uh, in the zip file afreadexamples123. Uh, and the first um, example would really be to take the, the standard data set, afreed examples one, use the afreed function to import um, that into, into your, um, into your um, R session. Yeah? So write a script called import data one, which imports uh, the data from afreed examples one. If you already have, a, have an idea or you want to try it on your own, just go ahead. Uh, if not, you can also uh, watch the solution um, to, to this exercise in a second. This is basically the workflow that you can use whenever um, the underlying raw data is already in a, in a good state, so to speak.